They all, there's elements of sun worship in each one. So how did pagan sun worship become integrated into our modern music forms? It was through the drum. And again, the drum is not an evil instrument in and of itself. Please don't misunderstand me on that. It's how it is used. All right? The stretched skin over the drum represents the tightly stretched stomach of the mother about to give birth to the sun god. Okay, so there's the, there's the sun aspect coming in. The drum is the symbol of the sun god. The African drums are considered to be sacred. They are washed, they're put to rest, and they are worshipped as deities. The belief is that the drums are the ears of the gods and that they must be played with the attitude that you are speaking to the gods on, the beha on behalf of humanity. Okay, so what, what is this drumming thing all about? And that, that, that comes from um, Hear the Long Snake Moan by uh, Michael Ventura. So I want to talk about voodoo just for a little bit here, okay? And voodoo... It was called Vodin. A lot of people equate voodoo with, with Africa. It was actually called Vodin worship in Africa, and it wasn't until it came to Haiti and, and, and uh, Santa Domingo and other places in the Caribbean that it was actually coined. It came to be known as voodoo. The follower of voodoo seeks to incorporate a loa, a lesser god, into himself by writhing and leaping through a dance while drums bang out complex rhythms. When just the right rhythm is found a, for a certain individual lesser god, the dancer takes it up and the lesser god enters his soul. His physical and mental powers are immediately heightened and he becomes godlike himself. Notice the lingo there. Animals will often be sacrificed to appease the spirits. The religion is strictly Dionysian. It is sensual and unrestrained and the dances often end in wholesale copulation. It ends in an orgy. Okay? There's three main things that were always present at a, at a pagan system of worship ceremony, from Baal to Ashtoreth to Dagon, whatever you would, all those, okay? And, and I'll just use the, the modern form of it. The rock and roll industry calls it sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? You have the sexual aspect ending in orgy there. Drugs, the drugs bring, it, bring about that heightened state of suggestibility. They bring about that altered state of consciousness and rhythmical dancing or drumming. Each percussive or vocal part has a slightly different rhythm which coincides with and sometimes crosses the other rhythms or the guiding pulse at strategic moments. The drummers often shuffle their feet and sway their bodies in a dance-like motion to assist them in maintaining contact with the main beat, especially when the rhythm is syncopated. During these rituals that still take place in the Congo and Yoruba land and everywhere else in the world, the intricate layers of the multiple rhythmic drumming are considered a source of occult power. That's an important point there, okay? Because remember, it's through the drumming that they believe that the spirits would come into them. And that they have, the, there's the, this, this crossroads aspect the tribal people's religious worship is seen as a bodily celebration. It's something that they experience physically. This is why the rhythm and the beat in their worship music is so accentuated. Remember, when you accentuate rhythm to the point of monotony, it, the response is a physical one. Look at this quote here from Jimi Hendrix. Okay, the, this, he was very much into voodoo. He wrote a song called Voodoo Child. He said, we are making our music into electric church music, a new kind of Bible, a Bible you carry around in your hearts, one that will give you a physical feeling. We try to make our music so loose and hard-hitting that it hits your soul hard enough to make it open. We want them to realize that our music is just as spiritual as going to church. We're talking about a religion here, all right? He goes on to say, Atmosphere, atmospheres are going to come through music because music is a spiritual thing of its own. That's what it was created for. It's a spiritual thing. But in the hands of Lucifer, remember, it's something else. 
You can hypnotize people with music, and when you get them at their weakest point, at that point at which the guard is let down, at that point at which the, the heightened state of suggestibility is at its highest, you can preach into the subconscious what you want to say. What an admission. So, how did voodoo enter into our modern modes of music? Okay? The blues were the sounds that the slaves made because they weren't allowed to play their drums. And I'm not condoning the slave trade in any way when I say that the, that the slave owners didn't allow them to, to practice their music. But they found other ways to incorporate these rhythms and, and elements of their voodoo ritual into music by the way they played the guitar, by the way they played any instrument, by the notes and the, rhythm, the rhythms were all essentially there. Blues actually means blue devils or a fit of bad temper or a melancholy feeling. A lot of times the subject matter of blues was, was sexual in nature, was about betrayal and, and uh, you know, cheating on one another and this and that. They were, they were played in brothels and bars and places of concerns of the flesh. Let me just read this quote here. The subject matter of blues often expressed betrayal, mistrust, perversion, and sexual desire. The sexual nature of many of the songs was deliberately veiled in African colloquialisms and terms. As a result, the listeners who heard the music could not understand the true nature of these songs. Here's a, here's a list of, of some of these terms that came out of this era that we still use today, and we don't, a lot of us don't realize, I didn't know what these, these words meant. The word funky. You heard the word funky? People use this word that, you know, kids use this word, they think it's a cool word. It's funky. But they don't understand really what the true meaning of the word is. The definition of funky is a strong smell or a, or a sweat, often in connection with a, a, a sexual connotation. So it's a, it's a, it's a it means it, uh, to smell sexual, basically. Okay? Boogie. You've heard of boogie? The boogeyman? The spook? Okay? This means to feel devilishly good. That's the definition of the term boogie. So someone might say, hey, let's play a funky beat. Let's get them dancing in that sexual way, and maybe they'll boogie they'll feel devilishly good. The mojo. You've heard of the mojo? The mojo is the male sexual organ. Or the soul. They, they believe that the soul was in your, in your sexual organ. So here, you know, uh, Jim Morrison, he wrote that song, Get Your Mojo Working. Now you know what he meant. The groove. Get into the groove. Madonna sings a song, Get Into the Groove so that you can prove your love to me. The groove is the female sexual organ. Now you know what she meant. Juke. Juke was another term for the spirit or the devil. Okay? So here you have the juke box, or quite literally, the box with the devils in it. So see, all these terms were, were, were veiled and... and, and, and hidden, their true meaning was hidden so that their music would be accepted and that they could continue to practice their ritualistic thing. And this just became infiltrated into all forms of music. From the blues, we get jazz. The definition of jazz is the immoral act. That's what the word means. And from jazz, we get rock and roll and all our other styles of music that follow this same kind of thing. And rock and roll was, a, was an African-American expression for sex before it was ever a term for music. So how can we have Christian rock? We are taking something that is absolutely profane and just because we think that we can attach the name of Jesus to it, it's now sanctified. Every style of music that we have out there in the world is we have in the contemporary Christian scene. I mean, they have punk, they have thrash, they have heavy metal, all these things. You can go to a Christian, Christian punk concert and they do moshing just like they do at a, a regular punk concert. All the same activities. But just because we attach the name of Jesus to it, we think that we can, we can, we can use this.